and we're back part two uh hi everyone i'm Teresa mccalva the yarn shop around the corner i'm gonna grab my sorry ah uh, grab my coffee real quick um part two so i'm so glad to be doing this but um unfortunately it's going to be coming out right as um so i'm going to talk a little bit about and and i guess it's still appropriate that it's coming out today because um you know the stephen west starts today so um sorry yes i drink a lot of creamer obviously too much creamer in my coffee but um it's so good okay so part two sorry about that yesterday i um once that day started it started and it was a lovely day and so um i'm just gonna roll with it today i thought i'd come in about an hour early it's nine o'clock don't up until 10 and it gives me a little bit of time to talk to you about um the stephen west um shawl mystery all of cal k-a-l a uh, knit along that i'm doing and um also talk to you about um mental health and fiber arts and so I don't, I kind of got off on some tangents yesterday, not tangents, I don't know if that's the right word, but I got off on some issues yesterday about, um, you can go back and watch that video, but I didn't mean to just, I think sometimes you start talking and you might have a, a, a train of thought that comes in that says this is what's really on your mind and heart you thought it was that but this is what you really want to say and i trust that i trust and just let it flow what needs to be said what needs to come out um i kind of let do i think i spent way too many years suppressing my my myself suppressing the things that i thought and and so by letting it out i've learned um one it it does a couple of things for me. I am a, I'm wonder, I mean, oh gosh. Okay, so didn't know this was coming out, but I am a person who excels, excels. Oh, I'm so good at. I benefit, that was what I'm trying to say. I benefit from talk therapy. And so talk therapy helps me in that, um, one, hearing myself say something out loud allows me to test it, so it allows me to put that, thought or that out there and to think um is that really true do i really think that and sometimes i say things and it's like a releasing it's cathartic it's it's okay i've released that i've said it out loud and i've heard it i've acknowledged it and i've let it go and so for me um it really works it really helps so that will kind of tie into what I want to talk about for mental health. But let me first talk about this, Stephen West, because I'm so excited for this. Now, listen, I'm way out of my league, so I have no idea what I'm doing. And I think most people know that. But so I've got my stitch markers. I got a, a, a variety because I'm like, I might need to know, you know, that yellow stitch marker might tell me something different from the other one. So I'm very, I've got a whole bunch. I've got my cable needles um i've got my needles uh this is a the one that was recommended is a size 4 40 inch but i have learned when i start shawls they fall off because i've got all these wires and things so i like to start casting on um unless it's the length of it unless it's like we're going to cast on 100 or more stitches i'll go straight to this one but if we're only doing like a little or start i've learned to start with a 16 and then um, switch to bigger because I just had a hard time. I've been doing the Where's Your Heart shawl, which I highly, highly recommend. I cannot wait to be done with that because it's so beautiful. Uh, but it's a pleasure to knit, but it's called Where's Your Heart shawl by um, Holly Dye Works. It's on Ravelry and it is a paid for pattern. And she also does lovely yarns, but I've been doing it and I kept having to start over because we, you start, um, you start on an end, a triangle, and my, I just would be working, I'm continental, so I, and I'm, I'm a weird continental, in that um, the way that I to perform my stitches, I throw with my left hand. I don't know why, it's because I'm a crocheter, and because I just kind of do what feels more natural and fun to me. Um, so, 
But when I do, when I throw with this hand, this needle would fall out and then every time. And so I would have to start over. So I've learned to start with a smaller, you know, 16 inch if I can. And I love Knitter's Pride. I mean, I'm just, I, I own a shop. This part will be like a shop owner telling you what she likes, but I just love, I know a lot of people like um, needles that are um, metal and I'm not there yet. I need something that grips on a little bit and that helps me as a newbie. Um, and this Knitter's Pride, I absolutely love, but the little bamboo, the wood, it just sort of grips the yarn better for me, especially because I'm working with fingering weight yarn and I really need that extra sort of hand. Um, I've got my trusty stoppers and protectors. So if I got to lay down my project, cause I do that a lot, you know, being in the shop, I'm working, I need to lay it down and I want to make sure everything is secure. Um, so one of my friends made me a bag. This is going to be my bag. I use my project bag. I'm so excited. Sandra made this for me and I love pink and I love the colors. And so I'm so excited about this. I got my scissors. Um, and then, ah, okay. So it's all sitting here. You can't see it. I, I'm still, I just, i my friend Tracy is going to come in today and um, we're doing this together. And Stacy um, is in Gatlinburg and we're doing it together with her as well. And so we're, I haven't watched the video yet. I mean, I know it's already out, but I'm waiting on Tracy to get here. And then the last final bit of decision, I think, cause I know I showed colors yesterday, but then I even, I went home and I found some in my stash and I'd forgotten about this. I really think I want this to be my pop of color. Um, I forgot about this, this variegated yarn. I just, I love it. So I'm going with that. And then I had this yarn that I bought at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival that I really like. And I was like, okay, I love these. I've been trying to see it. I already had them balled up because I wanted to do something with them. Oh, I'll show you this one. I had started a little granny square out of that. Just, don't you just love this? I just love the colors. So I think this is going to be my pop of color. This is going to be my main color. And then I need a contrast. So hear me out. I've got... If I can hold all this, this idea, because it's the gray. I like this idea because this is a bold color. This is a contrast with it. Um, so I like this, and I love this. But it's because I absolutely love this color. But I'm wondering if that's all gonna just blend in too much. So I'm waiting on Tracy to get here, and she can help me. So I haven't balled these up, and I haven't balled these up because I just don't know um, which one what I like better, but, or is it even, is it too blendy? And so I'm going to have her tell me, cause I even like, I like this, you know, I like that as well. So I'm going to have her because I can't decide. Um, if Nicole was coming in, I would say, Nicole, help me decide because I just, you know, I, I have a hard time picking out colors. So anyway, I just, that's my Stephen West. Um, I will update you as that goes. I'm, I am really determined. I'm sorry. I keep doing that. Um, I'm really determined to do this and to learn some new things. And I feel like this is a, a benchmark because like I have done that one up there that the peach one, um, let's see, all that is crochet except for the peach one and so that's my first knitted like shawl and it's well it's a scarf and I didn't finish it I did it only halfway because it was so massive and so I love that stitch I love that it was very pretty and then I could knit socks and I've knit a baby sweater I'm telling you stuff that was in the other video I'm sorry but I just feel like this is ambitious of me um I've seen his designs but he promises and that he, you know, takes it down to one step at a time. And so I'm really hoping I can keep up. And I really, I, it's just like when I started crochet, I just couldn't get enough. I wanted to learn more and more. I kept watching, um, Ophelia talks, uh, crochet Anya, and she just, as she would put out designs, I would, I would allow myself to get a little bit intimidated and she would say no. And so you could do it. And I would just trust her. I trusted her. And I did my first mystery crochet alone, and 
Oh my gosh. Um, if you haven't seen that video, you need to go see it because it is the most beautiful blanket I've ever made. It's a picnic blanket and it all folds up into itself into its own bag. And it is like my, I don't even bring it to the shop. I mean, it is my pride and joy at my home. I just, I absolutely love it. And she picked out, you know, she even chose the colors. All of it was a mystery. And so, but I couldn't get enough. I mean, one day I just started going through her videos and making everything on it because I wanted to learn so much. And I, I just, I wanted to be to where I could, you know, be that level and just make whatever she put out. And so I feel that way with knitting now and, and I'm still, you know, crocheting and I'm also now, you know, feel like I'm, I'm transported by knitting. You know, I sit here and I look at this, like I really want to make you know, a sweater for my, I want to be sitting here in my love notes sweater. So I'm going to try, that's January, um, try make it a love notes sweater. You know, it's something that looks using mohair, that's intimidating. Um, holding two strands together and knitting, that's intimidating. A lacy pattern, that's intimidating. So, but having all these ladies that I could kind of talk with and watch the videos is very helpful. Um, you know, having the pattern, having all these things to kind of go to and access is, it's not like before. I can imagine, you know, back of the day when you learned knitting and crocheting, if you didn't have someone that did it near you, um, you had a book and you had to look at pictures and figure it out. And I, I just don't think I'm that kind of a learner and which is why it never, none of this has never clicked until I could see a video and do it at the same time and like talk to people. So I'm excited about it if you can't tell. It's just a, a real, this is a real journey, a real adventure for me. So I'm very excited. All right, so I don't want this video to be that long. And I think I'm already like, I can barely see because I have this light on, but I think I'm already like in almost 12 minutes and I haven't even talked. So, um, so bear with me. This is very important. So I am noticing more and more, um, People coming in and opening up about their mental health and that is a wonderful thing I've done a lot of videos on my channel about mental health and how much crochet and fiber arts has helped me um, I don't think I've ever shared my story about why I have uh, struggles with, with mental health or have issues. And I really don't want to because, you know, what's amazing to me is I can see how much growth I've had because I used to live out my story by telling it all the time. I was, I was living my, my trauma by constantly telling my trauma. And so it was really hard for me to, um, like I would meet someone and I'd be like, okay, you need to know my, you need to know this about me. This is like, it defined me. And so now I sit back and go, my trauma is always part of me, but it doesn't define me anymore. My trauma is always part of my story. I'm not a bit ashamed of it. I'm not a bit of, but I also don't celebrate it either. It's not like, this makes me special. This makes me unique. If you knew what I've been through, you would, you know, you would, you would applaud me or you would feel sorry for me. I, I don't, I don't need any of that any, anymore. And I will admit for a time I did. For a time I, I needed sympathy. I needed people to understand me. I needed people to feel sorry for me. I need, is I needed them to understand my trauma. And one day I realized, oh my gosh, I'm in a room full of people who have no idea my backstory and they don't care. They like me for me. And I had no need to tell them my backstory. I have no need to tell them, you know, it's like I can enjoy the chapter I'm in. Those were other chapters and my story isn't over. My whole life is my story. And it's yet those chapters were, um, they, they did have an impression on me. And I do have uh, issues and things that I have to work harder to deal with because of those chapters, but I'm not defined by those chapters. I've turned and I'm in a new chapter. And I have 
um, some people who come in and meet me at this chapter and they think my life is always perfect, you know, it's so great. And, um, you know, I'm a yarn shop owner and um, I'm, I'm blissfully married because I am blissfully married and I am a yarn shop owner, but I still have had um, my, I'm not defined by this chapter either. Who knows what my next chapter will be? I mean, I'm literally hoping that I do this um, yarn shop and I really enjoy knitting and crochet. And I hope that when I'm 80 and 90, I'm still um, around and I'm still knitting and crocheting. Um, my biggest fear is that I will get um, arthritis, which is hereditary, um, and not be able to do this, which I absolutely love. But I've turned that over and I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm just going to enjoy it right now. But like this chapter, I'm hoping is my loving people, learning my craft, enjoying my craft, selling yarn, um, hopefully making a little bit of money to help um, our our household income while my husband works at the post office and then he, when he retires I hope to write books and travel and write about my experiences and you know I, I would love to be writing now but I I've learned I can't divide my time that that much so I just want want I want you to know that I'm um, I struggle but I'm not defined by my past chapters. Um, it's not that I have ooh, tucked them and hid them away and don't think about them. No, I can look at my past chapters and see the beauty in them, uh, the beauty in the trauma, the beauty in the ashes. And I can see that now. And I don't feel the need to relive or to be defined by it. It's just one part of who um, I am. I still uh, acknowledge the trauma. I won't want to say victim. I don't want to use victim. I, I still acknowledge the trauma that has been in my past and I still acknowledge it. I have no idea what's coming in the future. Um, none of us do. And so, but today, as I sit here in this thing, if there's anything that I can share, what was really on my heart is two things. Is um, It seems that people believe because they're walking into this chapter, that this is the only chapter. And um, that I want you to know that this is the chapter now and I'm gonna celebrate, I'm gonna love it. I'm not looking for, for negative or trauma and I'm, I'm not, I'm hopeful for even better chapters. You know, this is a great chapter, but this is not my whole story. And um, everything in my life is not always wonderful and great, even in this chapter. You know, there, there's days and there's things that I go through that are difficult. But I use my faith. I use my friendships in here. And I use crocheting and knitting. And um, it's interesting that when you get up and do something and you take your mind off from of ruminating, and that was my biggest problem in the past was ruminating over and over on a on a problem or a relationship or a trauma and I've learned that when you sit down and you go okay Stephen West teach me something and you start concentrating on a technique your mind goes off you what you're thinking on and goes on to what you're doing and I found that so helpful and um, I have so many people who get up off their couch and they go, okay, I'm having a rough day. I'm going to go to the yarn shop. Those are the smart people. Um, those are the people that know what they need to do and are taking responsibility for themselves and for their life. And I applaud you. They come in and they apologize. They, they always say, I'm so sorry, but I, I just need to get out of the house. Don't apologize. I'm so proud. I'm proud of every time you make a choice to do something different other than staying in the muck. Of our feelings and so I am not disclaimer for the beginning should have done I am NOT a counselor I am NOT a certified coach I am just a woman who's almost 50 um, and I've had a lot of life experience uh, that dealing with trauma unfortunately and hey if, if that means because now you know, it gives me a little bit of experience so on the positive end of how to take that and still twist. And that's why I'm doing these videos that is really long. And I know you guys have other things to do. 
but I appreciate you taking the time to listen. And I think that there's obviously either it's on my heart or there's someone that needs to hear this. But um, when we make choices to do something different or about how we feel um, in a positive or a good way, even if we're like, I don't know, this is very positive, but I'm getting out of here. We're doing something. You're making a good choice. And so I just want to encourage you because I see so many people who come in the yarn shop and they are apologetic, but their first things out of their mouth is, I just had to get out for a while. Um, I love that. I applaud you. I'm proud of you. Go to your local shop. Go go walk around. Go take a walk. Um, mental health is is important, and I'm rambling. I think I was talking about how unqualified I am. However, I'm so thankful for my past that has taught me a lot, and if I can pass on any of that, I want to. So this is a long, I think it's Lord, it might even be 30 minutes. I can't see. It's so bright. And I don't have, I have my glasses on. Mental health. I love you all. We all struggle with mental health. Um, all of us. And so I just want to encourage you to crochet and knit. Take a pattern. Take your focus off of what you're thinking about and focus off of what you're feeling and put your passion, put your energy into creating something. If you don't have anybody to make it for, my friend Cindy and I have come up with a wonderful thing. I'm going to tell you this real quick, they'll let you go. Okay, my friend Cindy and I have come up with this wonderful thing in that we want to try new patterns and we want to try different colors and different yarns to get out of our, I always made pink or blue because she says it's what I what I always wear, pink or blue. And so um, that wasn't her colors, but you know what I mean. And so we decided we're just going to make things and have a gift closet. And then we'll make the patterns that speak to us. We'll make it in the colors that speak to us. And then we'll put it in our gift closet. And then when somebody comes up with something, a birthday or something, there you go. There's a gift. And so I love that idea because it allows us some uh, creativity and adventure and fun in our creating. And yet we don't have to have someone in mind or ourselves in mind. And it just uh, allows us to stay excuse me, allows us to stay busy. So stay busy, my friend. Uh, hey, let's do the Stephen West together. If you're doing it, let me know you're doing it. And um, let's have some fun. Let's encourage each other. I'm real excited about it. I know this is something that is going to challenge me. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I'm just determined to keep going, even if I, you know, don't make it. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trying. Uh, regardless. So I think I've said a whole lot. I hope you have a great day. I hope to see you in the shop soon and good luck if you're doing the Stephen West and um, mental health. It's, it's, it's not a mental, it's, it's just our health. It's our health. Let's be healthy. Okay, everybody have a great day. I, I love you. Okay. Bye.